Okay, yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Michel Bank. I work at Creative, which is uh, one of the sponsors, and we're doing a lot of um, open source stuff since 1999, um, including 24 7 support, Brickfix support, supporting um, open source projects like a vendor, if there would be a vendor. We're based in Mönchengladbach, and we're always looking for good people, so come talk to us. We have about seven people in a database team, which I'm one of them. Um, and database team means Postgres for us. Uh, we are not super happy if clients come with MySQL problems, but we will try to help them if possible. Um, so in Debian, there is the package PostgreSQL team. We are packaging, I'm also part of the team, we are packaging all the Postgres core server, but also all the associated projects. And that's a um, statistics you probably can't see a lot here, but um, the uploaders per year. And the point is that it, it got started by Martin Pitt, who also um, started with the infrastructure for Postgres. And he was, uh, this is the blue line, so he was doing a lot here. But then in 2011, 2012, the orange line, which is uh, my colleague Christoph Burke, took over, and he did most of the uploads in the last couple of years. And also the yellow-orange line, or light-orange line, that's Arjan von der Driesch, who's a Debian maintainer. Uh, he's also working at Creative. So we're doing a lot of work in the Postgres, Debian, um, and Ubuntu, basically, teams, is my point. I'm the brown one here somewhere there. I did a couple of uploads, not, not so many, though. So just to give an overview about Postgres, I guess most people know about it. It's an extensible object relational database system created uh, at Berkeley in the 80s. But it's been open sourced in the 90s, and there were some unfortunate name changes from Postgres to Postgres 95 to PostgreSQL when they added SQL. It didn't have SQL in the beginning. And it's a BSD licensed project, so there's a lot of um, also proprietary forks. There's actually also a couple of unforks these days, so um, the extension system is so good that some p um, vendors were able to unfork their, ex their, their fork, and it's now just an, a regular extension. So you install the vanilla Postgres, and you install the extension, and you have the product. Um, no the open core, no dual licensing compared to, and there's also no copyright assignments. So it's very, very open, very free. Um, not not very copy lefty, I have to say, but um, on the other hand, all these companies who were doing a lot of um, proprietary stuff with Postgres are now kind of regretting that they were forking 10 years ago and Postgres has evolved and they're trying to get back and it's, it's a lot of work for them, so um, they figure it out and they're trying to do the work upstream, I guess, most of the time. And it's also probably was the first open source transaction safe database in the mid 90s. So MySQL was very good at web uh, interface or web browser, web server kind of stuff, um, quick queries. But if you were transaction based, um, Postgres was probably the one to choose. And also Debian was actually choosing it for quite a few of their um, projects internally. So the, just as a quick overview, the Postgres community um, it's called the Postgres Global Development Group, but it's not really a legal entity in the sense of SPI or something. It's more like Debian. Um, but they, this is a development group, and there is a core team of five members right now, I believe. And um, the important part is that they have a release team now. Uh, they didn't have it a couple of years ago, and they were slipping in their releases. Um, but now it's there, and they're keeping track of it. There's around 20 committers. Um, one of our um, one of our president is one of the committers, Michael Meskes. Um, he's he's actually committing quite some stuff, but not a lot. Um, and it's it's vendor neutral, basically. Yeah, no company owns it. No company is dominating it. There's a few companies doing quite a bit of um, development on it, but it's not owned by any particular company. And you can get support from basically um, different sources if you want. You're not. Um, tied to one company. 
they have now again a yearly release cycle. As I said, I think the 9.5 release three years ago was slipping to the next year, but they used to release in autumn and now they're back on track. And it's a bit like Debian. So they have a time based freeze, feature freeze, which just happened for the next release. Um, it happened in the end of March or beginning of April. And now they're in the beta, or they, it's going to be a beta release in, uh, in next week or in two weeks. And then they will consolidate that, fix all the bugs, and it's, uh, the next major release is supposed to come out in August or September, somewhere, third quarter. And also, it was somewhat remarkable, they have five years of maintenance per release, so they're also always re basically supporting five different major releases. And mm, they also moved to a quarterly patch release cycle, so you can go on the Postgres website and there's a calendar that says the next patch release will be out blah, blah, blah. I think it was actually last week that the last one was out, so the next one will be out in three months. And they are very conservative. They're only fixing bugs or uh, security issues, and so they're pro basically whitelisted by the Debian Stable Release Managers. They could just upload it as is. You don't need to back patch uh, the patch release. They're just, back they're just uploading the, the patch releases as a new, up, uh, new um, upstream patch release, basically. I talked already that there's quite a few of proper IG Fox. That's, that's how it goes with the BSD license. So main features, quick overview. It's packaged in Debian, yay. It's rock solid. And I think they are a bit, a bit proud that they were first going for the rock solid part and then for the speed part. Um, so there's, there's some issues, of course. There has been some bugs over the years. They add new features. They have bugs. But overall, you can be pretty certain that your data is not being eaten all the time by the database server. And as a SQL server, it has a pretty good and um, consistent and easy to figure out um, use of the SQL standard. So there's no real surprises. Um, and it has a couple of useful modern extensions. You used to have JSON support pretty early on and, and that kind of stuff. Even had uh, key value stores uh, much earlier on. It has a cost-based query planner that means that it tries to figure out, OK, how do I run this query? What's the best way to run it? What's the least costful way? And uh, it's just trying to run that, that plan. And it's pretty nice for administrators. It has transactional um, changes to the database structure. So you can start a transaction, you can drop a table, and then you can roll back, and the table is still there. And not every database product has that. Um, and then the extensibility is pretty good. There is drivers for many um, programming languages, for many procedural languages, so you can run um, server procedures in R or in Python or in Perl or in Shell if you must. And uh, in the last couple of years, the foreign data wrapper thing has also been extensively used, so you can uh, have federated access to other data sources or other Postgres servers. Um, that's, that's really something that, that's being exploited more and more, also for bigger um, features like trying to implement sharding via, via federated access over, over remote data sources. And there's a large number of extensions and associated products. So this is just the kind of the um, slight overview of what, what's kind of in core and, and external um, extensions you can have. There's really quite a few. Um, we have lots of source packages in the package PostgreSQL team, but these are a couple of them which have been uploaded or new since Stretch. So um, just as a quick overview, I don't want to get into too much detail here. And if you're interested in the new features, so Stretch came out with the 9.6, and then they actually changed the major version scheme to 10. So there is only one number now, and the next one will be 11 and 12. So every year there will be an increment of one. And since then, so 10 and 11 gave us, uh, oops, sorry, logical replication. So we had physical replication before, but now there's logical replication. And we have native declarative partitioning. That was not there before. You had to come up with fancy uh, schemes. And we'll have uh, just-in-time compilation of expressions. So this is an 11. This will be out by the time Buster will probably freeze. If we, have, if we hope that this will be an 11. 11 will be in Buster. And a couple of other uh, things. I'm not going to into very much detail. But there's new features coming every year, basically. 
So Postgres and Debian, how is it working? So Debian packages only one Postgres release per version. And the problem then is obvious that we have several Debian releases and we have several Postgres releases. And if you have some project which relies on a particular Postgres version or um, you want to upgrade your Debian one but you want to keep the Postgres one, that's, there is a problem there. So what people came up with in the package PostgreSQL team, um, they were trying to make or they, they made all the versions co-installable. So you can install the 9.6 and 10 Postgres servers on, on the same machine. They're, Debi they're different source packages and they live in different um, subdirectories. And there's a PostgreSQL com infrastructure which handles or uh, takes care of figuring out where the different um, database instances should go. And they're all listening on a, on a different port so you can address them from the outside differently. But then still you have only stretch in 9.6. So in theory you could install both, but how do you get the other one? And that's um, where the Postgres upstream team came in. And it's basically my colleague Christoph Burke, who is also um, affiliated with the upstream team. Um, he came up with app postgresql.org. So that's a project by the Postgres Global Development Group. But it's basically the same source packages as Debian uses, but they're recompiling or rebuilding um, all the Postgres versions for all the Debian and Ubuntu LTS versions. So if you need 9.4 for Bionic, you can get it there. You just have to put the right sources list and there, there's like obviously a pretty large number of sources lists, uh, 144. Oops. So we have three architectures that we're supporting. The PowerPC uh, 64 is pretty recent, but we had AMD 64 and i386 before. And uh, currently it's 8 Debian and Ubuntu releases, so Bionic should be there now and il the 11 releases is, is testing, basically. But the other ones are, are there. They're, those are the ones which are still are supported upstream. 9.3 will be de-supported in September when, when 11 comes out. So, there, so if somebody uploads a new um, version of a new source package from any of the package PostgreSQL team, um, there's a Jenkins um, build server run by DGI.net actually, so the people also um, sponsoring this conference. And um, this will rebuild all the binary packages for all the distributions and all the, well, if needed, Postgres versions. Some are version independent, but some actually need a proper Postgres version. And it's also running the auto package test. So we're trying to run the auto package test uh, if possible, to see that it's actually working in, in, in install versions. So how is PostgreSQL com working? It's, uh, it allows multiple versions to be consoled. I already said that. Um, every instance is in identified by a version and a cluster name. So m the default name is main, and the default version will, would be 9.6, for example. And every new instance gets a new port. So if you get a second uh, cluster from the 9.6 version, it will be running on 5.4.3.3, and you need to have another name. And there's wrappers where you can say, OK, this is the binary, uh, the, the client, and you tell it cluster 9.4 main. So that's a Debian uh, addition, how to address that particular cluster, if you don't want to know the, the port number, for example. And then there's a pgconf tool where you can read and edit parameter files easily. And there's a couple of other things. For example, you can create, uh, you have this create cluster configuration file, which uh, you can get a couple of options here. And uh, also you can get an additional config parameters. So they will be copied into the postgresql.conf main configuration file. So great. So this is how um, you can run several Postgres versions. but if you're actually running Postgres in production, um, you just you don't just run the Postgres server. Yeah? You have um, you have to well you have to operating system and all that kind of stuff. That's that's clear. But you also have backups. You need restore. You need retention time. You need monitoring. Usually, if you're running in production, uh, performance alerting, uh, also reporting, and maybe you also need high availability. So how does that work? We we at Creative came up with a way of um, gluing together several open source projects based on PostgreSQL common, basically, and um, some system deglue. And we're trying to make Postgres as easy as possible in using by having a, 
it's kind of like an appliance, so you can download it and you can run it, and it has a complete environment where all these uh, things I just mentioned are already set up for you. And it's modular and extensible if you want. It's just Debian packages. And we have a couple of clients who are interested only in the monitoring stuff, so they can just take that and um, use it for their already, maybe they're running it on Red Hat or something, so they can just take that part if they're interested. And it's 100% open source, it's on GitHub. Um, we're trying to get all the packages into Debian. We're not there yet, but at least the glue code is, is open source, and we're, we're committed to having it long-term maintained and commercial support. So those are the things that we're doing right now. I'm getting into more detail right now. So there's a, um, it's web-based. I didn't mention that maybe until now. So you have a web-based uh, interface. Um, this is the dashboard where you can get to all the, the other uh, parts of the thing and you get an uh, overview over all the clusters running on that local machine. So I have to say that it's mostly useful if you have a local machine where, you, where you're able to run a web server and um, expose that stuff um, to yourself um, for easy maintenance. Um, yeah, Postgres. The, the main interesting part I would say is, or one of the things that we actually put a lot of effort into is the monitoring, which is based on Prometheus and Grafana. So it's using a SQL exporter thing to Prometheus, which is an upstream um, project. We forked it for some performance stuff, but it's not written by us. Um, and it, there is a node exporter and an SQL exporter, and those metrics are then um, exposed to Grafana for dashboards that we also set up, so you can easily monitor your Postgres instance. And it looks like that. There's some more pictures, or maybe I'll have time for a live demo um, in a minute. But uh, basically we set up all the dashboards, and we also put in all the, the metrics that we, SQL metrics that we wanted out of the SQL exporter, because that SQL exporter is actually a database agnostic thing, and doesn't have any metrics itself, so we came up with the metrics. The database administration is done by pgadmin4, which is now a web-based um, DBA interface. Um, this one was the biggest problem because it's Flask-based, Python, there's lots of um, dependencies, and uh, Adrian von Andrich has been trying to get it into Debian fully. I'm not sure the current status, but it's mostly there. Um, it's certainly needed because the, the old pgadmin3 interface, which was written in C, or C++ C++ is, is deprecated, so we need this now. And, and you can use it for either ad hoc SQL queries or just to get an overview over all your tables um, for schema management and user management and dump restore stuff. We're doing backups using um, PG Backrest, which is an external project. It can do, it does physical backups, so you can, uh, it archives your transaction logs and, and you can go back in time um, you, can, you can restore it. So actually right now I have to say we're doing the backups for you with retention times, but um, restore has to be done manually. For now this is on the to-do list. Um, yeah, we, we have a preferred PostgreSQL conf. This, we're taking advantage of the PostgreSQL conf framework here where you can drop in the right configuration parameters for PG backrest in the um, template from PostgreSQL com, and it, so it can work. There is a prepared system D timer, so every time you actually create a new cluster, There's, there will be a systemd um, service or timer prepared for backups being done. So you don't have to set it up yourself. Or you can do it ad hoc if you want, there's a button on the, web, on the interface. We're doing some log file analysts, I'm not going to go into detail here a lot because it's, uh, it's PG Badger, it's pretty standard log file analysis. Also having a HTML, HTML report of it. And we're using Cockpit for system management, basically mostly so you can see the log files, or you can start and stop the instances, but you can also use it for all the other stuff. So Cockpit is a system written by Red Hat, but Martin Pitt now I think is working on it also. Um, you can use it for, for all the system-wide administration and in theory also to actually update your, your system. Um, we're supporting right now Debian stable mostly, but since uh, the next release, uh, we're also supporting Bionic for the server, um, for the appliance, I would say, and the server can be, it's more, not, not a big problem. The, you need to have the Prometheus exporter. So 
that's basically it. We have packages for both of those, the uh, X, X, AMD64 and PowerPC. Right, so further development. The 1.2.0 minor release just happened two days ago, and this one we managed to update to Grafana 5 and Prometheus 2. Um, so that so now is a good time to try it because before you all the all the um, Prometheus metrics would have to be thrown away because I'm not sure it's it's upgrade um, or at least we I'm not I'm not a Prometheus expert, but as far as I understand, you couldn't use the the old um, data with the new Prometheus. You cannot. Right, so now's a good time to try it because we just made the move to Prometheus 2 and now hopefully this will be more stable going forward. And we have an overall monitoring dashboard and as I said, there's Bionic support. What we want to do in the future is get Red Hat and Central support, so some customers are asking for that. There's quite a few. And, um, and also, um, Adrian von der has been working on a PostgreSQL com REST API. So it would be much easier, so this is a, a GitHub um, repo. Um, so you can do configuration changes or instant management via the REST API. So right now, actually creating an instance means you have to create the instance on a command line. It will be there um, automatically on the web front end, but you cannot create an instance. But then you will be able to actually create or destroy instances via the web interface. And we're also looking at a multi-host administration, um, if possible. So we can use, you can combine the view of several servers but this is a slightly bigger project, which we're not having a, date, a real um, timeline read. So if you want to try it out, you can do it. There's a vagrant box. Um, takes a bit of disk space, but okay. And um, you can just run vagrant in it, vagrant up, and then you have all these uh, things. And basically, the, the web GUI is here, and you, you're, you're basically good to go. And um, the website is elephantshed.io if you want to check it out. And I have to say that most of the work has been done by Christoph and Alexander and Atrion. So shout out to them. And further information, Elephant Shed IO, there's the GitHub. It's, it's on GitHub. We don't have an internal repository anymore. It's all on GitHub. And um, some information if you're looking, uh, if you're interested in, in working for us or interested in, in as, a, as a client or in general, you can, um, you can go there. And uh, my content address is there. So I think I'm mostly out of time anyway. Um, Yeah, <laughs> anyway, I'm done. And if there's any questions. <clears throat> hey, uh, I was curious if um, you have packaged uh, all this stuff because I would be interested. <laughs> Especially for Grafana and the changes done to the Prometheus port and all that. Uh, so we have a um, we have a local Debian repository which I didn't put the link on. Um, I can give it to you. I mean it's 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 public and it should be actually on the Elephant Shed IO well, website. I'm pretty sure. Um, and I don't think we have lots of for like we are using the Grafana packages. This might be slightly adopted, but it might be a pre-release or something, so we, we are obviously not using stretch in that sense, but um, you can look at there, and then if there's any questions, you can uh, we can also discuss later. I cannot say it right now because I didn't upload the, the Prometheus packages to that repo, but... I was mostly interested in... in the, the, the packages are there, the packages are there, and we're trying to move them into Debian. Uh, if that's package PostgreSQL stuff, we do it directly because we have the upload stuff. If not, uh, we're trying to talk to the people or nudge them, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, is, when talking about uh, updating versions, you said that uh, for updating it with retaining the data, you will need uh, two versions of PostgreSQL. Uh, why is that and uh, how, the, uh, how the process looks, looks like? Well, that's a good question. It takes... Uh, so. The on-disk format, in general, between major versions is not compatible. Um, you can use an in on, there's in-place upgrades using, it's called PG upgrade, but you need two data directories for that. Um, you don't necessarily need to, you need to copy all the data, but at least you need two places, and, and then there needs to be some transformation done. So it's not a, 
you cannot just, so for, for minor patch releases, you just put in the Debian packages and restart the server. That's not a problem. But for major updates, the system catalogs change and, and other things change. So either you need to dump all the data to a backup and restore it, or you need to um, do this in place upgrade thing. And then you need both versions installed, obviously, because the, you need both servers running at the same time on, on, in two different data directories. Is that basically answering your question? But it's, I mean, upgrades is a huge, uh, huge um, topic for the Postgres, so I could go on for half an hour. And then. Thank you. This seems like a very turnkey solution. You just yeah. put it on and it works, but who, who is the, to who are you selling this? Or to who, who installs this? Because I, I mean, it's, it's a bunch of things that's really great and it all works together, but if I wanted to put that in my system, it wouldn't work because I already have monitoring, I already have backups. It's Right, if you so already have all of that, then maybe you don't need it. Um, some people, as I said, are interested just in the Grafana dashboards and Prometheus metrics. If you already have that, they might be interested in that. Um, and it's, I think it's an interesting uh, way to come up, if you have a new, if, say you're, you're a database uh, guy and you want to check out Postgres, uh, but you don't want to come up with a huge project, then you can install it locally at first and then see, okay, everything's working, and then maybe also deploy it um, somewhere else. Um, certainly, I wouldn't recommend it for multi-terabyte databases and stuff like that, but um, just to try it out, it's, it's very easy. Yeah, it's just a Wacom box. And um, you can take parts of it. If you're any, anyway running on Debian, you can just take parts of it and you're good to go. All right. Thank you, Michael. We have our.